Hey traders, Rocky here. And in this video, we're going to talk about how I'm focusing on the Dow, how that affects the S&P and why the NASDAQ is still on the crazy train. Okay. And what that means to us as day traders. So we're going to start off with something that I've talked a lot about in these videos. And that is just a classic time tested breach retreat. Okay. So what is a breach? The breach is breaking through the level in this case, because I'm focused on the long side, the high of the clearing range. The clearing range is that segment of time from 930 to 10 AM. So in that 30 minutes, what is the high that is put in and what is the low that is put in? And once we have that high and low, when we take out the high and I'm focused mainly on the breaches to the upside, it doesn't mean I get long. In fact, that's a, I think that's a common approach and I think there's a better way. Now let's define better. Better means lower risk, higher probability follow through to the target and a target that does not require the market to put in a brand new high. Think about momentum trades for a moment. If you get long as a market's breaking through resistance, you need the market to continue to make higher highs in order to take profit. But when you wait for some sort of pullback or what I call in the day trading setup a retreat. The market breaks this key level, this high up in here, and then it retreats to this zone. This zone is a Fibonacci zone, by the way. It's the 38.2, the 50% and the 618 of the clearing range low to high. So I don't need the market to do in a situation like this, anything more than just retrace its steps. And, and typically it's going to be to the breach level. So all I need the market to do is just go back from where it came. And you can see it easily did that. And as long as we don't break a few key levels, we can continue to keep this market, uh, this trade open in the market, ideally with a stop, no further away than the break even. That way a winner doesn't turn into a loser once we've scaled out at the first target. Okay, so really classic there, but, but why focus on the Dow? Well, one of the things that we talked about yesterday was the fact that we're waiting for very specific setups. In other words, we're waiting for the market to head down to a level that again, doesn't require higher highs, can remain within the range and is closer to ultimately the stop loss. So let me show you exactly, well, this is my favorite kind of setup. And this takes me to probably my least favorite index futures contract, but my favorite setup. And that is, the combination of not just a V score low, which is at this point, you know, getting down just below two standard deviations, which was the low for the morning. So getting down below two standard deviations of the volume weighted average price and getting down to our volatility level, which is something I call the HPMR. This is a calculation that I created using data that measures the hourly price movement range of a market over the course of the last six months. So I call these HPMRs, hourly price movement ranges. And these are projections based on historical volatility. So I endearingly call this the garden lady low. I don't know what the garden lady did, right? And some of you know the narrative. If you don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> but what this is, is a very discerning, high probability, low risk setup where not only have we reached a volatility exhaustion level, we've reached a volume exhaustion level. And that is a buy. Again, a buy in my least favorite index. I don't like trading the Russell as much because of its weighting. It's not necessarily as tethered to the NASDAQ, the S&P and the Dow. But in this environment, not being tethered to the NAS is kind of a benefit. We know what a rocky trip the NAS, the S&P took when the NASDAQ had a little sell-off right around the 10 cent news hitting the market. And so sometimes in certain environments, even markets that I don't typically like to trade very often, like the Russell end up being actually a better market to consider uh, when, when you're looking at uh, the Dow, being a little bit more separated from NAS volatility. The S&P is right in the mosh pit with it. And the Russell, well, the Russell's not weighted like any of the other three. There's an advantage to that. So that's the kind of thing we're looking for. 
All right. So uh, that's really what I continue to focus on in this market. You know, it's kind of a, you know, I, I like that those old books. Um, remember the eat this, not that. We want to talk about trade this, not that. And the not that right now, gang, that's the NASDAQ in terms of our day trades. Hope that helped. I'll see you next week. Without simpler trading, I could not have financial independence. This is one of the best investments that I ever made in my life. It's helping me find consistency. It's one of the things that won me.